Lips, my old touring buddy. Here he is. Hey, man. Lips. What's going on? <laughs> there he is. What's up, buddy? There I am. Hey, man. Uh, congrats on the new record. Thanks. Yeah, it comes out in a couple came, of days. Awesome. What's that? Came out great. Yeah, I'm ha I, um, Rob actually had sent me the, uh, the artwork uh, a few months ago and asked me to keep it under wraps, but I was so giddy about it that I, I almost couldn't, couldn't resist, but we, you should put it up on the screen because it's excellent. Um, it's legal at last. You guys have it in the control room there? There it is. Nothing better than that. An angel taking a bong hit ah. in heaven. And it's a beautiful thing. And uh, you have the track Legal at Last. And you also have a, a song on there called Nabbed in Nebraska, which, if I'm correct, uh, stems from an actual experience from when I was on tour with you guys back in the spring. That's right. <laughs> if anybody knows, you know about it. You heard about it right after it happened. <laughs> Yeah, what was the story? You guys were traveling from where to where? Do you remember? Yeah, we were coming out of what? Out of, uh, I guess, out of Colorado. Right, and where we, it's we, legal. Colorado, and we did we did two shows that were in legal places, right? Yeah. And my crazy friend Bill, <laughs> he gave me a handful, and you know that I wasn't smoking anything the whole tour, right? Right. And, uh, like, I was kind of apprehensive, going, ah, I'm not smoking, man. And he's going, well, take it anyway. Maybe you'll have a day off and you'll get around to smoking. And I went, okay, what the hell? Well, I threw it in my, I threw it in my pa fanny pack. And we're driving along the highway. All of a sudden, we see signs, uh, welcome to Nebraska. You, you spelled my name wrong. It's with a K. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get it together. <laughs> Sorry about that, Lips. Oh, it's cut low, <laughs> and it's not Ludlow like the street in New York. That's right, <laughs> which, is a, which is an excellent street, but not your name. Yeah, right near Katz's Deli, right? Oh, correct, that's right. <laughs> Get a nice knish down there. That's right, you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. Uh, you go into Nebraska. It's a friendly state, you would think, but... Yeah, you know, a corn husking state. It's a great place, man. <laughs> awesome. And it's interesting because they were the first, as we found out, they were the first state to actually decriminalize marijuana. Right. So it becomes a very, just a fine is what it ends up, up being. And they wait at the border for people to cross in from Colorado. And we see this sign, you know, drug dogs on duty. Right. <laughs> going, oh, 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 shit. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody's like going, oh, no, man. So Robbo starts getting off the highway we're going up a, a ramp and i'm empty i emptied the thing out of my pocket put it on the dashboard to move my fanny pack out of the way so i could stick it down my my pants right. <laughs> so of course it's beating sun it's starting to it's starting to sweat and of course we're off the highway it's getting even hotter so i roll the window down and the weed blows out the window <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, right off the dash, woof, out the window. And wouldn't you know that there's a, a policeman stand, standing right outside, or actually like sitting in his cruiser right beside the highway in a parking lot. Wow. So he just boots it and comes up from behind us, and the lights come on, and it's like, oh, no. So he comes up to my, up to my window, and he goes, do you throw something out? And I go, no, but something blew out. He goes, you expect me to believe that? <laughs> and just as he said that, a whole bunch of papers on the, on the like, you know, like uh, uh, tour sheets, posters, yeah. Kleenex, all stuff's blowing out the window right in his face. Right. And so that, that kind of quieted him down. And he goes, well, you got a choice. Either you admit that it went out the window and I charge you for littering and give you a ticket for the weed or you say you you didn't, and and I give you an obstruction of justice, and you're coming to court. Mm. Uh, hard decision. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's my weed. He gave me a hundred dollar fine for littering and two hundred and fifty dollar fine for having weed. Well, I mean, you know, um, nabbed in Nebraska sounds a lot better than littering in Nebraska. So I, you did the right thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>
Yeah, I, and I, I remember getting to the next uh, the, the next city that we were in, and uh, and hearing the whole story. So, and I'm glad. So I'm glad you got a, a song out of it. Um, I don't think I could rock out to littering in Nebraska. No, yes, yeah, <laughs> it just it wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, your street cred goes way down. If if you're a rock star and you're you know your street cred is that you litter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but I, I, the thing is, I wasn't littering. It blew no, I know. The- because, but whatever, and he didn't want to believe that it blew out the window. But when all the stuff started blowing off the dash, he he definitely saw that I was telling the truth. Well, I had nothing to hide, man. But the thing is, you know, he got out of his cruiser and ran and scooped up the what flew out the window, and it was wrapped in Kleenex, uh, the little plastic bag, yeah. right? So the whole thing was intact. It didn't fall apart when it went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it seems like there's a, a theme to this album. If, if I'm picking up on the vibe, legal, legal at last. Um, <laughs> there is kind of. A, is it kind of a, du- a dual meaning? Oh, I think we lost lips here. Is he back? There he, there he is. is. Sorry, we lost you for a second. I'm sorry, but my wife is trying to call me in the middle of doing interviews. Not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> you, it was nice meeting your wife, by the way. Yeah, she's cool. She would probably say hello. I told her I was going to be talking to you today. So, yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, and I wanted, I want to, we'll talk about that afterwards. But, um, yeah, so you kind of yeah. have a double meaning to Legal at Last? A theme in, in, throughout the whole album, and it has to do with marijuana. Now, come on, we all know that marijuana wasn't made illegal because because of it being bad for you, right? It was made illegal because it was a, a, a huge detriment to the economy. Yeah. And what do I mean by the economy? Well, first of all, the cotton industry, the pulp and paper industry, wow. the lumber industry, huge, huge, right? And, and in, in eventuality, the plastic industry, because anything that you can make out of plastic could be made out of hardened hemp, believe yeah. it or not. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can make a lot, tons of clothing out of hemp. There's a, there's a million uses for it now. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's not just well, a, not a, a, right. an economic it's thing. Huge, it's a huge, huge concern, to the, to, especially to the authorities at the time. In, in fact, in the, at, in the t- time and place that they did make it illegal, they barely even knew that it got you stoned. That had nothing to do with it. Right. It's just a huge, a huge threat. To, to the to the you know the industrial revolution that was going on I mean most most of the interiors of cars could have been made out of hemp I mean that they could make biodegradable they can make bio uh, diesel out of hemp so it was a, a complete like a, the, the whole economy everything and oil everything so everything that we touched upon in the in the album in our my environmental raving <laughs> <laughs> I say, exactly. I say lips for Prime Minister of Canada. There you go. Yeah, it's exactly and directly in in line with the idea to make uh, marijuana legal. Yeah, yeah. Certainly, song gasoline, the song um, uh, you know, uh, uh, plastic in paradise, and chemtrails. That we wouldn't be using chemtrails. And there's a big theory about you know conspiracy theory about chemtrails in the sense that chemtrails. Chemtrails. What, what I've found out is that it's it's a chemical that they're dumping into the air that's basically liquid aluminum, which deflects sunlight, which is slows down the process of global warming. So we wouldn't have all these problems, and you wouldn't be using plastic bottles. You'd be using hemp bottles, and they'd be biodegradable. So you, you know you wouldn't have plastic in paradise. You wouldn't have global warming. All the all the different aspects that I touched upon in the lyrics throughout the album are somehow in a weird way tied into the idea of marijuana being legalized. You're, you're like, you're totally blowing my mind out now. Like, uh, I want you to like, I wish you were in Canadian. I wish you could come run for office here in America to talk some sense into people. But um, I'm glad you're still making music. Uh, you know, obviously I've been a fan since 1981, hard and heavy coming out. You got 40 years of music behind you. Got a new album. Now you got to make the set list. How does that go down between you and Robbo and, and Chris? Well, that's it's actually not a problem. We're just going to make the set list longer. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a four-hour show now. Yeah, exactly. It just gets longer and longer every album. Right. And that's 
that's basically how we've kind of solved the problem. Right. Because you have to play, you know, obviously there's hit songs you have to play. You have to play metal on metal. You got to play, people definitely want stuff from the early albums. But you guys have been consistent putting out records in the modern age as well, ever since the success of uh, the documentary. Well, even before, I mean, we got to keep in mind, and a lot of people don't keep in mind, when we did the movie, that was put that was getting to put out our 13th album, yeah. right? And it's not about a band that was that was a failure. It's about a band that had a had a, a certain level of success all along, right? Right, and so, I right, and I was, and, and you know, this is through to the big time. Well, no, and we still haven't because we haven't got that break that you really need, right? But but this is what I, I want to make a point of because you know I toured with you guys for about five weeks, and I got to watch you every night. And and the one thing I told everybody was, there's so much joy on stage when you guys play, and that's what really struck me every night about you guys. It was just there was just always pure joy, pure energy on the stage. Um, so I just want like how do you how do you keep it fresh? on stage every night or is it just the music different you know that we had a lot in common because basically i'm doing a stand-up comedian job up there too right. <laughs> um well you you can ask yourself the question how do you keep it fresh well every time that you go up there you you say the same stuff and go through the same routine but you say it in a different way to entertain yourself <laughs> Right, true, but I mean, do you, I mean, you you get a legitimate joy out of being up there every night, and I do love. He's like, he really is like a stand up comic up there. I mean, he's he's got his stage wraps down, but he changed them up a little bit every night depending on where he was. Yeah, yeah, it was like you know, he's he was showing me up every night. It was great, man, to have a comedian on tour with me because I could actually have have conversations about what what I'm doing and learn from a real professional comedian about <laughs> stuff, you know. I do this whole talk about my a hole in my haircut, and he's going. And Don goes, "Hey, man, you should be turning around and show the audience, man." <laughs> right? Yeah, because so Lips has a little of the you know he's got a little of the, the thinning up here. I said you got to you know you got to be a physical comic when you do that. You got to show the show the crowd. So yeah, we. Uh, we and, and you know what? You were absolutely right. It was a hundred percent successful. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm thrilled that you guys have a new record. I love again that you get such a joy. I love that people, after ten years, are still responding uh, to the movie. I know that there's at least some footage um, of a part two of the story of Anvil. Do you think it'll ever see the light of day? I that's that's hard to say. Really hard to say. I mean, I I, I can be very morbid about it, and I actually believe that. They'll probably use that when one of us or both of us are gone. Uh, no, we well, can, it's yeah. useful, right? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I, you, you know, you always hope that that's not the case. But, um, you know, I think people, it's amazing that people are still hankering for a part two after 10 years. That just shows you the power of the first one, uh, which also, by the way, started the entire craze of rock documentaries that have, that have continued since then. Yeah, right. Sort of like the same thing that happened with our music. <laughs> we come out, we start this thing called metal that has, you know, speed, speed double bass drum. And the next thing you know, everybody's doing it. <laughs> I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. In all the years you've been performing and playing, has there been one person that was a fan of your band that you were completely surprised by? Like, holy crap, you like us? Oh, probably there's been a lot. It's been a lot, really. I mean, certainly when I found out that Dave Kroll was a fan, I thought that was pretty remarkable. That's awesome. Um, well, I could see that drummer, you know, drummer, obviously, you know, Robbo being a huge drumming influence on a lot of people. So, yeah, I could see Grohl being into that. Yeah, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the drumming. It, I mean, part of the reason that Dave said that he uses a semi-hollow guitar is because I do. Oh, wow. And in fact, um, when we did the uh, the Indie Awards or the Independent Spirit Awards, Dave showed up to actually introduce us to the crowd. And when he showed up, he got out of his limousine and he's carrying a, a guitar case and he hands it to me, he goes, this is for you. And he gave me a Dave Grohl guitar. 
which I can't even, I, I was beyond words. Like I was like completely speechless. I, un, unbelievable, man. Yeah. So he gave me Gibson, Dave Grohl guitar. He goes, only you would understand how, what this really means. <laughs> yeah. And he gives me a hug. Wow. Unbelievable, man. That's a, that's a good guy to have on your side. But like I always say, put your money where your mouth is. Foo Fighters. These yeah, guys, right. Anvil has a new album out. Take them on the road. Let's give them a few. You know, ACDC did that for you guys a few years back. It's time for Foo Fighters to, to step up. I know you already uh, you have some already uh, touring plans for 2020. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, we've, got, uh, we've got 50 shows that start on the 26th of, of this month. And we're all going all the way through Europe. Once we finish Europe, we're going to end up back here in Canada. And we've got a number of shows already booked all through Quebec and, and the East Coast. By the time we finish Canada, we'll be probably late August, take a week or two off. And then we begin touring all through the States, probably another 50 shows anyway, at least. And it's just a question of who we're going to get to do the tour with. <laughs> And we're trying to sort that out. Well, I was, I was our tours, but ultimately the big break. I'm still waiting for yeah the Dave Grohl or the or the or the uh, you know the major band like Metallica or somebody there. To, let's take you out and show you around. <laughs> right. Well, that's I, what, ultimately that's a, that separates all of it. Until that really happens, you struggle in the clubs like we have been for the last forty years. Yeah, but you still put on you still put on a show like you're playing every night at Madison Square Garden, and I know how much the fans appreciate that and appreciate yeah, sure. appreciate you guys putting out new music. Everyone, go get Legal at Last. It's out on the 14th, so just a few days from now, and go out and support Anvil on the road. And I'll see you guys when you hit the East Coast of the states, and uh, we'll catch up then. Okay, sounds like a great plan, man. Thanks so really much, nice Lips. To see you. Talk to you today, man. You too, brother. Tell uh, tell your wife I said hello. Tell Robbo and Christ I said hello. Okay, I will, man. All right, peace out, man. Okay, bye-bye. Cool, I had a great... I